Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tid.com video, we have yet more information on the PlayStation 4 specs. This is more of a follow-up video as well as a little bit of talk on it, the PS4's ability to output to second screens and that type of thing. So the first thing we're going to talk about is one small issue that I have to hold my hands up with and that is the PlayStation 4's memory. Now you may remember a comparison video I made fairly recently actually which goes against the Durango as well as the Wii U but primarily the Durango and it mentioned that the current rumours back then of course was the PlayStation 4 had 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM and the reason that many people thought that it wouldn't be able to go to the 8 gigs which was later rumoured is simple and that's the price of memory in other words the amount of cost shall we say and that it was so late in the PlayStation 4's development cycle to kind of bump that memory up most people just didn't really think it was going to go to you know press if you will they just didn't really think it was going to happen however this is obviously false and the PS4 does indeed ship with 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM now if this is true and obviously it is because it's been confirmed and the Durango uh, so Xbox 720 to an eye. Um, apparently it's only going to be shipping with 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So in other words, the PS4 definitely has quite a big advantage there. In terms of graphics card and CPU, we're not really looking at anything spectacularly different to what we originally expected. It indeed seems to be using the AMD um, Jaguar for the CPU which of course is 8 core. I've gone into heavy details on this by the way in a previous video so I'd highly recommend you click on the link that I'll provide and you guys can check that out yourselves as well as the AMD GPU so once again they've gone with AMD for both the graphics card and the CPU. The AMD uh, GPU is indeed outputting about 1.84 teleflops so around what we expected. Um, so once again pretty much business as usual. It's also unsurprising that the PS4 has all the regular ports that you'd expect, including HDMI and um, standard out, in other words, AV out, that's not really a surprise. It's also unsurprising that it, of course, features Wi-Fi right out of the box, uh, does support USB 3 standard, which isn't you know, a shock to anyone, as well as, of course, a Blu-ray and DVD, although, of course, that's only read-only, it's not going to be able to write your DVDs. And all of this, of course, is wrapped up in a built-in hard drive. Once again, Sony made the right choice. They know it with the PS3. They said, hey, you know what? This is one thing that definitely works for our console, including the hard drive. It makes absolutely no sense to not do that. And I'm really hoping Microsoft will do the same thing. I imagine they will, especially in the age of, well, media. However, what is new is the fact that Sony have confirmed that the Vita along with iOS and Android smartphones as well as tablets by the way will be able to act as second screens for the PS4 this will basically be using your Wi-Fi now what's really cool about this is that means that in theory for example let's say your PS4 is in the living room and you are not in the living room let's say you're in your bedroom and you can't be asked to basically go into your you know living room to play well what you can do is basically just use your Android tablet for example to play games on okay you won't get all the surround sound and all the coolness but hey it's nice but what is really good and very similar actually to the Wii used of um, method if you will is the fact that you can actually use the second screen as well for, for say inventory or say displaying maps now this is obviously going to be an application and as i've said earlier it's going to be very similar to the wii u in that respect i really like this actually um i'm actually a massive fan of this and i'll tell you why um i don't necessarily know if i'll use it a whole load maybe depending on certain games but the reason i like it is just for the fact that you can just use it on any device and I just really like that I think it's nice that Sony are giving you so much freedom and they're saying hey you can use this on iOS you can use this on Android all up to you my friend and of course it even works better because you can use it on your Vita so you've really got no excuses you're going to have one device most likely in your home that you're going to be able to take advantage of this of so obviously all of this functionality is just fantastic now regarding the controller we've covered this briefly before and indeed it's not anything particularly different from the video that I did just a while back 
covering actually the prototype joypad, but it appears that the PlayStation 4 joypad does actually have quite a lot of the functionality that we expected it to. Of course, most of the functionalities, such as, for example, the L and R buttons, or the left and right analog stick, uh, square, triangle, those buttons, you know, the general ones that you associate with the pad, they're still there. However, Stars and Slate have gone bye-bye, they've gone the way of the proverbial dodo, and we now have the share button as well as the options button. You've of course got the directional buttons up, down, left, right, and that was the D-pad to you and I. However, that's gone with some overhaul as well. Once again, we expected that. What is a bit different, however, is the touchpad. We actually have some confirmation now. It is a touchpad. There's no screen there. I'm sure many of you know this, but I'm just going to go through it just real quick in case you're not familiar. Um, it is indeed a two-point touch screen, and you can click on it. So that's pretty darn nice, actually. It even has a light bar, vibration, and built-in mono speaker, which is an interesting choice, very similar to the Wii U, uh, sorry, to the Wii and Wii U there. It also features a motion sensor. Once again, we expected that as well. It's a six-axis motion sensing system that gives you three-axis gyroscope and three-axis accelerometer. It also features USB, that's a micro B port. Um, and it's also got a support for stereo head jack. Now, we guessed it had a stereo jack on there, however, there was some confusion whether it was some type of switch, maybe, from the early versions of the pad, or possibly the, the port was there just, I mean, I'm talking about the headphone port, was there possibly only for the, you know, the preview models, maybe, because, you know, developers sometimes work in, uh, you know, booths and that kind of thing, so maybe it was just there for that. No, it's not. It turns out that this is real. That's surprising, to be honest with you. Um, as for the USB, from a PC perspective, I'm curious if it will be available on the Windows platform. A doubtful, but you never know. And this is, of course, all using a Bluetooth version 2 communication and does, of course, include its own a rechargeable battery. Very similar to the PS3 in design. I don't think they're going to change that. It just works well and it saves people whining about needing to buy double AA batteries all day long. Of course, you could buy rechargeables, but you get the idea. I think it was very smart of Sony to keep the basic premise of the PlayStation 4 joypad intact. I don't think there was any real need to do a massive rehaul of the whole thing. It works, people are familiar with it. Of course, Nintendo are very, very notorious for pretty much redesigning the controllers from the ground up every single time. I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing, it obviously depends upon what they're going for from each of the consoles. However, in Sony's case, there's absolutely no need to do it. People are quite happy and familiar, and they don't want to be scared, if you will, with a completely design, new design. So it doesn't really work for them, and in this case, they've managed to cram in enough functionality. Admittedly, the pad is a little bit larger now, but that's not really a big problem at all. Of course, the other specifications we've got now are on the PlayStation 4 i, and it does indeed support video pixel resolution of set uh, 1280 by 800 pixel that's times two and it could do that at 60 fps or frames per second if you prefer it can also support 640 by 400 at 120 fps or the very crummy resolution of 320 by 192 at a rather astounding 240 fps obviously we're talking about bandwidth issues here it also supports video format of raw u uh, YUV, should I say, that's uncompressed. Now, these are dual lenses and F values and F20 fixed focus, for those of you who care, with a capture radius of about 30 cm, with a field of view of 85. It's got a built in microphone, that's four channel microphone array. As for connection type, it actually features a dedicated connector, that's an AUX connector directly to the PS4 so it doesn't take up a USB slot or anything like that. And that little sucker has about 2 meters of cable, although the cable length is un um, well, it's tentative at the moment, we're not exactly sure if that's confirmed. Probably not, it might be a bit different, but 2 meters sounds about fair to me. Once again, most of the PlayStation 4 move stuff was rumored, I just wanted to go over it just to confirm it since we've not produced a video exactly going over it before, so I thought I might as well more for the sake of completeness. So what are my thoughts on the PS4 specs as a quick overview? 
Well, I must say I'm fairly impressed. I will be doing a complete breakdown of this stuff possibly in the next few days, which is going to be going over a lot of what the actual PS4 actually has in it in terms of giving you an overview of what the Jaguar CPU is, giving you an overview of what the processor, the graphics processor is, uh, memory and all that type of thing. But my initial thoughts are very similar. Uh, it supports 1080p quite nicely indeed. Um, from the interviews I've read, it seems that all of the demos were running at 1080p on the PS4 conference, which isn't surprising. Obviously, Sony are going to want to do that. Last generation, the big headline, of course, was 720p. There were later updates for consoles, which did allow the consoles to output at 1080p, but for the most part, of course, they were upscaled. There were very few native 1080p games, um, for reasons I've gone into previously, mostly involving, um, well, the fact that it's very difficult to output at 1080p. If you don't believe me, you can go ahead and, say, do a benchmark on your own PC. You can see the difference um, from 1080p and 720p, or you can just Google um, benchmarks, PC benchmarks. You can see the difference uh, at the frame rates, for example, of different resolutions. And you can see when you start outputting at 1080p, it definitely starts to really hammer the video resolution. Um, so video memory bandwidth, for example, and becomes a lot harder for the scene to be drawn and so on. So yeah, obviously they want to make a bigger impression here. Obviously at some point or another, however, there will be a point where it's no longer out able to output increasingly complicated scenes because obviously the games we see at launch are nowhere near going to be the quality that, say, games in say three or four years' time are going to look. Say maybe they have to drop down the, the resolution then, but at that point, who cares, right? What I am saying, however, is I am very impressed with the PS4 specifications. I'm actually going to go into another video, possibly, which is going to be going against the PC a little bit. In other words, what it's going to mean for PC owners. However, as a PC gamer, primarily, I must say I'm very happy with the specifications of this system. I think it's going to really give a, a kick up the ass, to be honest with you, to game development on the PC and generally on consoles, which I think has been really held back for a while now with the limited specifications that we've got. So anyway, I think that just about covers it for me. Um, once again, we haven't really covered much massively new ground on this video, but what we have done is just cemented uh, what the PS4 has, what the PS4 is going to offer. I must say I'm very happy with it, and I'm going to be very, very curious to what uh, Microsoft are going to do in terms of its answer. Obviously, the previous rumours were the PS4 definitely had the advantage in terms of the graphics um, card. It actually had quite significant improvements. I believe, although this is from pure memory, that the PS4 had, I believe it was four... Uh, GCN cores, although there was some rumours because obviously it depends on whether they're um, going to be turned into compute cores or not, whether you want to count those, regardless of the fact the other um, advantage of PS4 definitely seemed to have was memory bandwidth. Now, of course, the memory bandwidth um, isn't the only thing the PS4 has advantage of, it actually is equal in terms of memory as well. So this is going to be quite an interesting... Um, console war to say the least could well be the ps4 is going to be the clear runner up in uh, sorry the clear winner in terms of actual raw performance however until we actually get something from microsoft who knows regardless of the facts i think that's just about it for this particular video hopefully you've enjoyed it and i will see you around soon take care of yourselves bye for now